It is a very common myth that an argument appealing to authority is necessarily fallacious. Now, it is true that you will find the ad vericundum, the appeal to authority, listed as the name of an informal fallacy in the logic textbooks. The first thing to note about this is that it's not appealing to authority as such that makes an argument fallacious. It's, it is appeal to an unqualified authority, appeal to an authority without uh, any particular expertise in the area. It's drawing a conclusion based on the evidence of the testimony of someone who actually doesn't know anything much about the subject matter of the conclusion. The Power of Logic by C. Stephen Lehman, 3rd edition, uh, I believe starting with the 4th edition, They are uh, this book is edited by uh, Ryan Wasserman and Howard Snyder and Howard Snyder. Uh, this book is particularly good at uh, explaining this issue. I recommend that particular logic textbook especially. The uh, for example, endorsement of a political candidate by a celebrity would normally be an appeal to unqualified authority, unless the celebrity happens to have some particular knowledge of political theory or of economics or uh, some subject matter that's actually relevant to uh, our ability to distinguish between um, uh, someone who's going to be uh, a good leader in government, a good senator, a good representative, a good president, and someone who's not going to be good. The the very occasional celebrity like, say, Ben Stein, who knows something about economics, uh, might be an exception here. Normally, celebrity endorsements of politicians are fallacious. Uh, if I remember correctly, Tom Cruise was very good on this when, as a celebrity, he was asked in 2004 if he was voting for Bush or Kerry, and he correctly answered that it was uh, not relevant, it was no one else's business. Um, I thought that was great. So um, the second thing to note about the uh, informal fallacy uh, ad vericundum is that informal fallacies by their nature do not describe uh, the patterns of arguments that are always fallacious. This is why they're called informal fallacies. A formal fallacy is a fallacy by the very nature of the form of the argument. The form of appealing to authority just means you have a premise that appeals to the, the allegedly expert testimony of someone on a subject and a conclusion that um, that person's testimony is correct because of that person's expertise, or in some cases not a person but uh, a book or, or some, other, uh, some other source of uh, allegedly well-informed knowledge. And uh, this is just the pattern of an argument, and it's not fallacious by virtue of the pattern of the argument. It's not fallacious by virtue of the form of argument. If it were, it would be a formal fallacy, but it's an informal fallacy. The logic textbooks will tell you what makes an informal fallacy is that an argument... Uh, what makes an informal fallacy is uh, an argument using that particular pattern, but doing it in a fallacious manner which is determined partially by the content of the argument. So, for example, if the argument pattern is simply uh, uh, authority X says Y, X has expertise in the subject matter of Y, therefore Y is true. This is a perfectly legitimate argument. If uh, the appeal is to, to my authority on my expertise, in, say, Augustine's early writings, because I actually know something about Augustine's early writings. But uh, you should never appeal to my authority on um, uh, on uh, 1700s Russian literature, because I know precisely nothing whatsoever about Russian literature in the 1700s. And an appeal to authority can be legitimate if it is an appeal to a legitimate authority, someone with actual knowledge, actual uh, expertise of a subject. Now, the uh, point made by Augustine, speaking of Augustine, is very legitimate. He points out that most of what we believe, most of what we know, most of what we rationally believe actually relies on authority to some significant extent. We even know who our parents are based on their reliable testimony. These days, you might try to uh, get around that by running a DNA test. But as I like to point out, uh, you're still relying on the testimony of the person who runs the DNA test, unless you run it yourself. But then you're still relying on the authority of the genetics textbooks and the scientists who wrote them and the scientists who did the experiments establishing the science of genetics for your knowledge of the legitimacy of a DNA test and for your knowledge of who your parents are. Um, I recommend on this subject also 
uh, a writing from a different sort of philosopher, Scott Adams. I recommend the introduction to the book, Don't Stand Where the Comet is Assumed to Strike Oil.